stretchy so comfy just beautiful I really wasn't that impressed with this print off the body I really liked the colors but once I put it on it came to life so you should try it on too don't forget with this travel fabric you can pull the skirt up and tie it in the front like a sarong and now you have multi uses available with one garment. So cute, right? I'm wearing a medium. They come in small, medium, and large, and they are available for you now. Same dress, different print. Look at these beautiful colors. This time I added a Moroccan rounder belt. Look at these beautiful colors with the yellow and the blue and the orange and the brown. So pretty. I feel like you could wear this all year. And this is what it looks like without the belt. and final print and color variation that we have in this gorgeous dress. So comfortable. I call this the uptown dress. You can really just wear it to so many different occasions. It's great for travel because it does not wrinkle. Plus, you can always tie it up and wear it as a short dress for separate occasions. And for all you Moroccan lovers out there, I brought in one of our all-time favorites, the crystal wash tunic with fringe. Isn't it so fun? Remember, this fabric is hand-woven cotton and rayon. It has a very high-quality feel to it. It's very light and cool and wonderful for all different weather conditions. Let's see what this looks like with a belt. If you add a belt to this, you can get a completely different look. You can still wear it as a dress, but you can also throw on a pair of jeans or leggings or shorts if you don't feel comfortable wearing it as a dress. So I have the belt low on my hips, but let's see what it looks like if we wear it high. There we are. You can decide what looks better for your body type and what fits your personality. You can put that belt wherever you want. I could not resist this beautiful Moroccan dress. It, look at these colors. It's so unique. You're really not going to find this color combination very often. So it's very comfortable and lovely without a belt, but I do think that we should see what this looks like with a belt. So this poncho is connected to this dress. This is all one piece. What I'm going to do is go under the poncho in the back. You don't have to do that. That's just a suggestion. And I'm going to go over the poncho in the front. Now, I don't know if this necklace is quite right for it. No, <laughs> hangs a little too long. And it does have pockets. They're, there's a lot of fabric, so you're going to have to feel around for them, but they're there. And this fabric just moves so beautifully. If you're into twirling, this is definitely the fabric for you. <laughs> the belt makes all the difference personally. It's like I said, it's cute just as a poncho, but I'm gonna put the belt over the poncho in the back and the front so you can see it both ways. And I'm keeping the belt pretty high because the poncho is not that long. So I think if we were to go lower, it wouldn't work. So now you can see what the belt looks like over both the front and the back of the poncho. I mean, we could probably get totally creative with the poncho, right? 
Like what if we took it and it's kind of a lot of fabric, so you might want to use a rubber band instead of tying a knot. But look at what this does. That That's changes cute. it. Now you can put the belt low. The cool thing about this is if you needed to like fly off of a tall building to go save somebody, you already have your cape with you. <laughs> it's so pretty, it's so elegant. I actually think this little cape is elegant. Huh. It is. It's cute. It looks cute like that. I only have one, so if this is for you, let me know and I'll hold it and you can come try it on. And it is one size fits most. Look at these adorable flared pants. They're so cute. I can't help myself. <laughs> I thought these pants would just be so much fun. We're heading into summer. They're lightweight. They're comfy. Throw them on with some flats or some heels, a wedge. And then to top it off, I got this new jacket. So you've seen the poncho, you've seen the wish shrug, but this is the jacket version of those items. So it's the same rayon netted fabric that we love so much because it gives us a little bit of coverage for things that we want to camouflage. But not only that, it keeps us a little bit warmer when it's cool outside and it does give us a little bit of protection for the sun as well. So they really come in handy. It's very comfortable. One size fits all, however it's gonna fit. And I got them in a number of colors for you. So we've got white, black, navy blue, ice blue, which is supposed to be gray, but it's really sort of an ice blue. You'll just decide when you're here. Golden brown, turquoise, and the dark turquoise. So we have a light turquoise and a dark turquoise. This one's a little bit more aqua, but it's still a bright turquoise. All of these beautiful colors, if the shrug is too short and you really like a sleeve so the poncho won't work, this is gonna be the perfect solution piece for you. And occasionally I have a pant in the store that's very unique. And we're all sort of thinking to ourselves, well, I want a top that goes with it. What top goes with this? And I try to tell people, I know it seems boring, but we have our go-to pieces that just seem to go with everything. A tank top and a little jacket will solve your problem. If you have a pair of pants or a bottom in your closet that you don't have the perfect top to go with it, trust me when I tell you, a tank top and a little jacket, whether it's a denim jacket or this or something else, it will work, it will complete the outfit and you'll be able to wear that awesome piece that you've been dying to wear that's probably just sitting in your closet. So if you don't believe me, try it out for size. I know sometimes you're thinking, no, I do that too much, it's getting boring, but just do it because the pant or the skirt or whatever the item is that's below that you're gonna need to show off is going to be the spotlight item of your outfit anyways, and you're gonna want that item to show off. So it's fine if your top pieces are a little more basic and simple. And another infamous Moroccan top. I mean, just look at that, so cute. It's got this double layer that crisscrosses, so you have to be a little bit careful when the wind blows, but ultimately it's just very comfortable and it goes all the way down over our elbows, which is great. We love the V-neck. The fabric, again, is just really comfortable to wear. And I paired it with the flare pant that has this cute little crochet detail all the way down the leg. So we always sell out of these pants and we haven't had them in for a little while. And so this is like their dark blue. So if you don't have them, it does have an elastic waistband. They do sit a little bit lower than some of the pants we have, but I just can't keep them in. Everybody that I know that has them loves them. So if you haven't experienced them yet, please get in here and try them on because they're so comfortable. Check out this gorgeous, gorgeous dress. It's got this little twisted fabric here that sort of acts like a belt. It comes down way too far for what I would want. So if you're like really into sexiness, you don't have to put this little slip tank under, but I put the slip tank under because it's completely open in the front as well as exposing all of your cleavage. So you can do pants underneath, you can do a bandeau on top. You don't have to wear it like a dress. 
but I just thought this was so fun and somebody out there has some event coming up now that things are starting to open up and I think this is the perfect piece for you. So they were actually sold out and they sold me their sample. This is a small, this is very tight. I could barely get into it. My buff arms are about to bust out of here. <laughs> so if you're smaller than me, if you're more petite, you might have to take up the length, but otherwise this is for you. Today's self love talk is a little different than usual. I had somebody write in. A lot of us have either been through this in the past or are going through it now. And even if it's not the same scenario, I think we all know what it's like to be stuck or to feel stuck. If any of you are going through anything and you just want to feel heard and seen and witnessed, please feel free to write in to me and I will address your concerns on the next self love video. My husband and I have been in our marriage for about 10 years past its prime, 17 years total. We are now traveling overseas with our kids, which is amazing, but I know divorce is inevitable. I'm not in a position at this moment to go through with it as I am relying on him for an income. He is a good person by nature, but is so negative, belittling, condescending, short-tempered, workaholic, device-aholic, etc. Sorry, I shouldn't be so negative. The thing is, is it takes two to tango. I get it. But we just have irreconcilable differences on totally different pages and are not the same people we were when we met in our early 20s. I know we are both miserable and unhappy. And now, unfortunately, the kids know it too. I have no one I can talk to about it and sometimes I feel trapped and alone in an unhappy relationship. It's especially difficult while traveling because we cannot even leave each other's space. I pray often, have faith God will direct me, take deep breaths, do yoga, and say mantras to calm myself. I find the less I say the better it is, but the more unhappy I feel. And the first thing that comes to mind when I'm reading your story is that you are in the driver's seat for your life. Only you can decide what's right for you. I know women who have stayed in unhappy marriages and were happy that they did. It got to a place where it mellowed out. Their relationship evolved in such a way that it was worth staying in it for the family. Is that right for you? I don't know. The only way that this marriage can be saved, in my opinion, is if your husband goes to therapy, if you go to therapy, and then together you guys do therapy. You said that you're kind of learning to say less, but you're feeling more unhappy because of it. Sometimes we feel like we have to speak up and we have to defend ourselves and we want to, you know, we want to feed into their negativity. But the reality is, is that if you pull back, you resist responding, you resist defending, you are going to help calm the situation down. And I hear you when you're saying, but that leaves you unhappy. And that's where I think a therapist can really come in handy. Finding the right therapist is also like finding the right partner in life. Not everyone is made equal, but it's worth it. I believe it's worth it to go out there and find the right person because I don't think you guys can do this alone. Also, the other part where you're pointing out that he's negative and belittling, condescending, short-tempered, workaholic, device-aholic, and then you apologize and said, I shouldn't be so negative. You're reporting on something that you're experiencing and feeling. That is your experience. That's valid. Maybe divorce is the right thing for you, but because you have these children, I would say if your husband's willing to do therapy, that I would do everything everything I could to make sure that that happens to save the marriage. And if it's just unsavable, then you're doing the right thing by coming up with mantras, by practicing your intentional breathing, by doing yoga. Don't forget writing in a journal is a fantastic way to emote, especially when you have nobody you can get it out to. I think we've all been there. I think we've all been trapped and feel very alone sometimes. And you're just going to have to face these issues that are being ignored. It's not okay for you to be unhappy all the time, especially when you're the role model for these children. These children need to learn how to handle life's issues, to have boundaries. They need to learn by watching you what's okay and not okay for them. 
when I left my last relationship, I was really, really, really unhappy. We just were not compatible. Eventually, I realized that I was the only one standing in my way. I was the only one. We can go into fear. We can go into like, I don't have money. Where am I going to live? How am I going to support myself and my kids? We can go into all of these what ifs and all of these fears that are valid. But when I was looking in the mirror and when I was feeling heartbroken and unhappy and unsatisfied with this one life, I mean, who knows? Maybe we're going to come back. Maybe there's reincarnation, but I'm talking about right here, right now, this one life as Shauna Rose right here, right now. I was the only one preventing myself from having a life that made me happy and made me feel fulfilled. And I started radically looking at all of the areas that I was interfering with my happiness. Me. I was choosing to be there. I was choosing to hang on. I was choosing not to have boundaries. I was choosing not to speak up for myself. I was choosing to let fear lead me. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that old saying, always let fear be your guide. <laughs> Sounds silly, doesn't it? But that's what most of us do. We let fear guide us. And although fear is there to protect us, oftentimes it inhibits us moving forward. It gets in the way of us actually conquering things that we really want. I'm glad to hear that you have a relationship with God and I would just say continue to ask for guidance. Ask and you shall receive. And maybe start looking into what life would look like if you did have a job. If you did leave. What else could this life look like for you? We can only control what we can control. And if we're focused on things that we can't control, we're going to be unhappy. We're going to be angry. We're going to be sad. Find out what you can control. And if you can't do it on your own, find a professional that can help you navigate through those thoughts and those feelings. If we all take responsibility for ourselves and make our own happiness, our own job and our own priority, and I think one by one, we will make this world a better place, starting with ourselves. One love.